In order to access the transducer configuration menu on your Controls Incorporated module, you must first enter the controller password. To do so, please watch our Controls Incorporated password entry video. Once you have accessed the configurable menu, keep pressing the menu button until you reach Transducer Configuration. In this video, the operator sets up a level transducer auto start system. To do so, press the up arrow button to select the transducer type, which is currently set to none. In order to change the transducer type, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button to cycle through the transducer types until you reach the desired choice. In this case, the operator chooses level. Once you have reached the desired transducer type, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to select the sender scale or output of the transducer, which is currently set to 4 to 20 milliamps. In order to change the sender scale, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button to cycle through the scale outputs until you reach the desired choice. In this case, the operator chooses to keep the sender scale set to 4 to 20 milliamps. Once you have reached the desired sender scale, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to select the minimum reading, which is currently set to 0 inches. Press the up arrow button to select the maximum reading, which is currently set to 1200 inches. In order to change the maximum reading for the level transducer, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust the number of inches. You may also hold down the arrow buttons and the numbers will run up or down accordingly. Once you have reached the desired maximum reading, which in this case is 600 inches, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to select the current level, which is currently set to 0 inches. Press the up arrow button to select the zero trim calibration. The zero trim calibration calibrates the transducer to the static error reading. This will trim out any errors in your transducer. For example, a 4 to 20 milliamp transducer in static error should be adjusted to 400. Press the up arrow button to view the current zero trim ratio. The zero trim is currently set to 402 and therefore needs to be adjusted. To do so, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust the numerical setting. Once you have reached the desired zero trim ratio, which in this case is 400 milliamps, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Finally, press the up arrow button to return to the transducer configuration menu. Now that the operator has configured the controller for the transducer type, it is now necessary to program the controller to recognize the transducer. In the case of a level transducer, we would start and stop the pump based on the level of fluid in the well. While in the transducer configuration main menu, keep pressing the menu button until you reach the auto operation settings. Press the up arrow button to view the start stop input feature, which is currently set to operate from floats. In order to change the start stop input, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Keep pressing the up arrow button to cycle through the start stop input selections until you reach the desired choice, which in this case is transducer. Once you have reached the desired choice, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to view the fail-safe float feature, which is currently set to off. To turn the fail-safe float on, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Press the up arrow button to enable the fail-safe float. Then press enter to remove the brackets. When enabled, this backup feature allows the operator to attach a float system. In the event of a transducer failure, the engine and pump would still start upon the float closure. Press the up arrow button to view the fail safe speed, which is currently set to 2400 RPM. In order to change the fail safe speed, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust speed. 
You may also hold down the arrow buttons and the numbers will run up or down accordingly. Once you have reached the desired speed, which in this case is 1500 RPM, press enter to remove the brackets. Press the up arrow button to view the fail-safe float time delay, which is currently set to 0 seconds. In order to change the fail-safe float time delay, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Keep pressing the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust time. Once you have reached the desired time delay, which in this case is a minimum of 5 seconds, press enter to remove the brackets. Press the up arrow button to view the on level feature, which is currently set to 960 inches. The on level feature indicates at what level the transducer sends a signal to begin pumping. In order to change the on level parameters, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust the level inches. You may also hold down the arrow buttons and the numbers will run up or down accordingly. Once you have reached the desired level, which in this case is 480 inches, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to view the off level feature, which is currently set to 50 inches. The off level feature indicates at what level the transducer sends a signal to stop pumping and turn off the engine. In order to change the off level parameters, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Continuously press the up arrow button or down arrow button to adjust the level inches. You can also hold down the arrow buttons and the numbers will run up or down accordingly. Once you have reached the desired level, which in this case is 120 inches, press enter and the brackets will disappear. Press the up arrow button to view the current level, which is currently 2 inches. Press the up arrow button to view the throttle mode, which is currently set to single speed. In order to change the throttle mode, press enter and brackets will appear around the current setting. Keep pressing the up arrow button to cycle through the throttle types until you reach the desired choice. In this video, the operator chooses to keep the throttle type set to single speed. In the single speed mode, the engine will constantly run at the programmed operating speed. Press enter to remove the brackets. Press the up arrow button to view the target operating speed, which is currently set to 1800 RPM. Press the up arrow button to return to the auto operation settings menu. Finally, press and hold both the menu and enter button at the same time in order to return to the normal engine operating display. Always cycle the key switch off and back on again to retain any menu changes. When the controls incorporated module is placed in auto mode and no start command is present, the controller will automatically enter sleep mode after two minutes of inactivity. However, it should be noted that while the controller is in auto mode, any external input will cause the engine to start, such as floats, transducers, or in this case, a level transducer auto start system. When using a level transducer auto start system, the display screen will alternate between the typical engine vital screen and the start and stop set points of the level transducer settings. The engine will turn on and the pump will start once the pit levels rise above 480 inches or 40 feet. The engine and pump will stop running once the pit levels drop below 120 inches or 10 feet. The current level of the pit will also appear on the display screen in between the start and stop set points. When the pit levels rise above the start point, the controller will immediately power up and begin a countdown to start the engine. Please note that the engine may warm up, ramp up, and then ramp down or cool down according to settings selected in the Auto Start Configuration menu. When the engine ramps up or down, arrows will be shown next to the engine speed on the normal engine operating display. Once the pit levels have lowered below the stop point, the engine will ramp down, cool down, then shut down, and the controller will go back into sleep mode after two minutes of inactivity.
A fail-safe flow can be used as a backup system to the transducer so that your engine and pump will continue to operate if the transducer fails. With the occurrence of a transducer failure, a message will appear on your display saying that the transducer is out of range. A yellow alarm lamp will also be illuminated on your controller. With the fail-safe float feature, the float will close and the controller will immediately power up and begin a countdown to start the engine. While the engine is running, the display screen will indicate that the fail-safe mode is active and that the transducer is still out of range, alternating with the normal engine operating display. The engine will continue to run as long as the fail-safe float is closed. When the float opens, the engine will then ramp down, cool down, and shut down, and the controller will go back into sleep mode after two minutes of inactivity. If the transducer begins to work again, the transducer failure message and yellow alarm lamp will disappear and the display will continue to alternate between the typical engine vital screen and the start and stop set points of the level transducer settings.